Martin Van Buren was president from 1837 to 1841. He was from a small town called Kinderhook, just south of present-day Albany, New York. One couldn't say that he was necessarily poor growing up. However, he did have to grapple his way to the top. First and foremost, his English wasn't his first language. Dutch was his first language. Dutch was the language that was spoken in his home. Second, his formal education stopped at the age of 14. Not bad considering the time. What he ended up doing was reading law in a law office in Kinderhook and eventually, through his own merits and through the help of a, of a favor done to his father, he was able to actually pass the bar and begin practicing law himself. So Martin Van Buren, more or less a self-made man with a bit of luck. The problem for him as a man of newfound wealth in New York, he had a tendency to enjoy the finer things in life. He dressed meticulously, he maybe enjoyed fine wine on a night out, he even sported some pretty awesome sideburns. One might even call them robust sideburns. And this would eventually come to bite Martin Van Buren back. Later on, his critics would call this a dandyish style of refined tastes. But I think you can see where this was going, what the implication would be. Okay, so he was president in 1837. 1840, he's gotta be reelected, so he's running on behalf of the Democratic Republicans. His challenger, He's an interesting fellow, he was 67 years old at the time, William Henry Harrison, nominated by the Whigs. Now 67 is pretty old, that's the oldest person elected until Ronald Reagan in 1980. Now this was an interesting campaign because both sides campaigned pretty hard. Harrison himself was old, he took it easy, he let the campaign, he let the Whigs do it for him, but this was a time of political banners, a time of slogans, there was even a campaign song, and eventually the distinct characteristics of both of the candidates came to the forefront. And what ended up happening was that William Henry Harrison was seen as a log cabin type. No, not that kind of log cabin. An actual, like, man who would go out in the woods and hunt and skin animals and, and rough it. He was a former general, widely popular, and he was known as the hard cider log cabin candidate. This was to the detriment of Martin Van Buren, who, as we said before, enjoyed kind of a lavish, new wealth style lifestyle, sideburns, fine wine. And to top that off, the country was going through a pretty harsh recession at the time. And so a combination of these things, Martin Van Buren's perceived lavish lifestyle contrasted with William Henry Harrison's perceived log cabin style ended up winning the White House for William Henry Harrison. And the great irony of this is that William Henry Harrison wasn't really a self-made man. He came from a family of wealthy farmers. Martin Van Buren was the man who went out there, made a name for himself, earned his wealth, earned everything he had. But that's just not how elections go sometimes. So this perception of luxury was what brought down Martin Van Buren. This insinuation of this effeminate man in the White House with sideburns enjoying a bubble bath and drinking fine wine. That being said, there's no clear evidence that Martin Van Buren was a homosexual, though that was the implication. No evidence that we can find points to him being a homosexual. He had a wife, she died in 1819. He decided not to remarry afterwards. So was Van Buren the first gay president? Probably not, unless he was really good at hiding it. But the next guy we're going to talk about, evidence not so sparse for this man. It's James Buchanan, who was the 15th president, the last president before the beginning of the Civil War. In 1818, James Buchanan had this courtship, we'll call it, because remember back in the day, they had to like court their lovers. And Buchanan had a courtship that was very, very brief. In strange circumstances, the woman ended up going insane and dying, but irrelevant. After that short courtship in 1818, Buchanan didn't express any interest in courting anyone else, any interest in women in general. He did, however, spend 10 years roomed with another man. That's right, he ended up spending a period of time with William Rufus King, who would go on to be Franklin Pierce's vice president. So they lived together, they attended social events as a pair, at the very least, you could say that their friendship was affectionate, loving, but were they a couple? I think most historians who look at this know they think that James Buchanan was indeed a homosexual. We have a little bit of evidence to that effect. Here's an excerpt from a letter that Buchanan sent to Cornelia Roosevelt. 
He says, I have gone a wooing to several gentlemen, but have not succeeded with one of them. I feel that it is not good for a man to be alone. Eh, okay. He went on in that same letter to explain that maybe he would just marry some old lady uh, so as not to be alone in his old age, not to have to survive through old age by himself. And everywhere they went, James Buchanan and Rufus King, they were referred to as Miss Nancy or Fancy Nancy. What was it? Hold on, I have it right here. Fancy Nancy and Miss Nancy and Aunt Fancy, whatever. The implication's pretty obvious. Now we don't know for sure because after Buchanan's death, purportedly his family went about kind of taking some old letters, some correspondences between him and King and destroying them. And so what we have left today is more or less this platonic and yet very affectionate relationship that we can see through their writings to one another. But really the honest, the honest reason I made this video was not to question the sexuality of former presidents, though it is kind of fun. Ultimately, that has no bearing whatsoever on whether they make a good president, whether they've been a good leader. Uh, Van Buren and Buchanan, both presidents that history has not been kind to over the years. Of course, Buchanan partly credited with the dissolution of the entire United States prior to the Civil War, so that's not good. And Van Buren oversaw a very bad time of economic insecurity. The real reason I wanted to make this video was because I just think the election of 1840 was so interesting. Uh, I was reading about it and I just thought I, I, I wanted to find a way to talk about it here on YouTube. I'm going to link in the description below so that you can maybe read about it some more yourself. It's kind of what would reflect as a modern campaign, but back in 1840. It's really interesting. There's some flyers on the Wikipedia page. You can find the, the campaign song. It's a really cool thing. So check that out. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day, friends.